This is Peter Kong from Synergy Kotak in the Balu, talking about the use of intraoperative mitomycin in the prophylaxis and treatment of PVR. PVR is the main cause of recurrent RD. The surgical principle is thorough removal of vitreous and retina traction and identification and treatment of all breaks. The usual surgical steps are radical vitreous space dissection, lens and membrane removal, retinectomy and tamponade. Adjuvant intraoperative mitomycin C is an additional step to prevent recurrence of PVR. 60 year old men have a 2 year history of poor vision from chronic retina detachment with PVR in the right eye. A FECO emulsification was done followed by a 25 gauge fast partner retractomy. Here, the trans equatorial vitreous membrane was cut. The vitreous space was trimmed meticulously and all membranes were dissected. Drainage of the subretina fluid will reduce the billowing of the retina and risk of atrogenic break. Next is the removal of every retina membrane with forceps. The view can be enhanced by dyeing such as dual membrane. In this case, the ILM was peeled over the macula. Next is the application of the metamycin C. The drug is diluted to 10 to 20 microgram per minute and is mixed with dye for visualization. It is applied to area of PVR or high risk area for about 30 seconds. In order to reduce ocular toxicity, the sandwich method is used. First, the peripheral carbon is injected into the posterior pool. This is followed by the air fluid exchange so that the air remains empty already. The middle fluid layer is the location where the metamycin will be injected into. The following rubber was injected slowly up to the left edge of the retina break. This will attach the retina and check whether it is under tension due to residual membrane or shortened retina. Next, a fluid case section was performed anteriorly to create a cushion bubble for the protection of anterior structure such as the cilia body and the lens from the metamycin C. The dye metamycin C was induced directly on the retina surface and allowed to remain in contact for about 30 seconds, after which it will be washed out. The BSS infusion was turned on to wash the air bubble and the metamycin C from the eye. Any remaining subretinal band was removed through a retinal tomy using a faucet. The inferior retina was stored during peripheral carbon injection, so I proceeded to do a retinectomy after diatomy. A broad sheet of subretinal membrane was seen and excised. The head test was performed. Unfortunately, because the retina remained shortened, the A went into the subretina space. More retinectomy was done circumferentially. This is a case of a little bit more wound hurt, a little less might. Be careful with the rotation of the eyeball as the peripheral carbon can migrate into the subretina space. After the circumferential retinectomy, the retina angels folded inward. This was unrolled by gentle massage. 
Finally, a radial retinectomy was performed to relieve the sentry battle force. A barricade laser was applied to the retinectomy edge and turn the 60 degree. The silicon oil was injected. One of the surgery, the retina remains fed under oil without any evidence of TBA recurrence. The region has improved from light perception to counting fingers and toes. In summary, PBA surgery demands medical features and membrane removal as well as judicious retinectomy. Metal is a useful agent to reduce the recurrence of PBA.